Welcome to Lawmen Season 3. This is a podcast where we investigate local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm Alistair Beckett-King. And I'm James Shakeshaft. And I think investigate is perhaps a strong word. It's a massive exaggeration based on what we do. We read pamphlets. Books. Just a little bit of Wikipedia. Occasionally some ballads. You're more ballading than me. I'm heavily ballad based. And our first episode. What's it about, James? Well, we've got a guest in. We've oh. got a guest law person, Pierre Novelli. He's a fantastic stand up comedian with He's a name from, I think, every country on earth. Pierre, Pierre Novelli, French and Italian. He's not either of those things. No, he's from the Isle of Man. But he told us a great story about a talking animal Jeff the Talking Mongoose. I guess we should introduce Pierre yeah. to, to the listeners of the podcast, I yes. suppose. Please, listen. I don't know how to address the listeners. I've never addressed oh, them Oh, before. no, this is the thing. I was thinking about this today. You speak to them as though it were one person. Right. Which, to be honest... <laughs> <laughs> no, we both listen to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay. Easily double, double figures, that so is, fu- isn't it? So, future Alistair. Um, we have, very excitingly, a deputy lawman present with us in the tiny recording box. And the, I think easily the largest man I've seen, I think. Not just the largest person we've had on the podcast. It's Pierre Novelli. Hello, Pierre. Hello. Hello. And obviously this is an audio medium, so the true scale of the man can't really be appreciated. <laughs> but, like, I'm I'm 6'2". How tall are you, James? 6'3 <coughs> or 4, depending on my back. Whereas, Pierre, you are about 7 feet tall and wide, I think. <laughs> You're like the broad shoulders of a giant. A cube of, a cube of <laughs> beef and pork. Um... I uh, I'm 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 six, I'm six four in my in my stockinged feet, mm. but uh, it is the because I am wide. Uh, if I say my height on stage, I get heckled. Really, people I, don't believe you. They think you're looking at a, a squat person. Yes, <laughs> where you're actually there's no visual reference point apart from the <laughs> mic stand, and that's uh, not a fixed visual uh, reference point. That's why I always get holding a fifty pence piece, so people <laughs> yeah. know exactly how large yes. I am. I I hold a two pounds coin, but say it's a one pound coin. <laughs> <laughs> I should get a meter ruler or something. <laughs> but Jenny, a couple of times uh, where I, f- for the purposes of a joke, I've had to mention my height, and uh, it, it, there's always been a, an element of, of dispute and murmur. But, um, um, really, that's a, such I, a great thing to be heckled for. Yeah. Like, no, no, you no, aren't that I think he's <laughs> lying. Um, obviously, um, the listeners, I'm sure, will, will know you from many wonderful Edinburgh hours and uh, the Mash Report and the yes. Bud Pod. But yes. none of that is of any importance no. here. The important thing is that you are from two places. You're yes. from South Africa and the Isle of Man. Yes. And previously on the podcast, we've because we, we obviously we make fun of folklore on yeah. this podcast a little bit, uh-huh. <laughs> um, which is fine. But when it's other countries' folklore, it feels a bit weird for us to go. They believe this crazy thing. Now yeah. we, we have no problem whatsoever making fun of South Africans or people from the Isle of Man. Yeah. But we've got you here anyway. So we can do it really directly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, but yes. But then yes. it turned out it was massive. So what I'm saying is just defend defend your culture. Okay. There is, a, I think, a very special story attached to the Isle of Man, which is obviously a, a magical and a, a wonderful place full of extraordinary mysticism. Yes, it's very otherworldly. Even when, even in its sort of dull bits, it's still odd. Even in the, <laughs> even in the Tesco Metro. Yeah, it, oh. it really is, because you'll, it'll still be full of, like, Local wares. Is that, is that a version of werewolves? Yeah. Is that, what sense of wear? That's, that's our slur. That's our local <laughs> slur for the werewolf community. Um, it's still, it's very, I, I took a friend of mine who's from, he's from sort of southwest London and he came to visit me on, on the island, as we say, the Isle of Man. And he, he only came for a bit, but he, was, he, said, um, he said really sincerely that the whole place had an air of, like he had, he he really didn't expect it to feel so different, but it really did. He found yeah. it quite odd. Yeah, mm. he said there's elements of this place that feel like you're in a sort of odd dream. Yeah, well, I, I've never been. I imagine a sort of uh, Royston Vasey by way of the Wicker Man kind of vibe. Yes, but Royston yeah. Vasey with more of a beach life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If, yes, if if if. if does, I don't know Cumbria well enough, but does Cumbria have any sort of fading seaside towns? It's further south on that bit of the coast, Ooh, generally, isn't um, it? Because the accent kind of goes all over the place. The older Isle of Man guys, I mean, like people in their 80s or 90s, sound more Irish. 
Mm. Um, and the younger guys sound more sort of Scouse or yeah. Cumbrian. Right. I've, I've been shouted at by Mark Cavendish. Yes. Sw- shouted and sworn at by Mark Cavendish. Yes. And that, was, that had a very sort of northwest mm. Manchester yeah. Liverpool edge to the attack. Yeah. And if mm. you're not if you're not listening carefully enough, you might think like, oh yeah, mm. okay, he's they're from you know Kirby Lonsdale or somewhere sort of sort of halfway between Liverpool and Cumbric Mountains. Mm. But if you if you know the accent, you can immediately go right. That's Isle of Man or. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a odd sounding one. What's the main sort of method of ingress to the island? That's not the right word, is it? In- ingress. Ingress. Yeah. How'd yeah. you get there? Yeah. Is, basically, is it plane? Is it you, boat? Is it pedalo? You can you can fly. It's way further from the kidnapping. English. I think because yeah. yes. <laughs> the population's a, dropping. They've a, got to do something. A, ma- <laughs> a magic well is, is, the, <laughs> is the best way. Yeah, a man asks if you want to see puppies, to, <laughs> and then you're there. You wake up. Just, you. just no memory. And you've always been there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why are there carvings of me on this stone? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the the Isle of Man is much farther from the English coast than people think. So mm. the, you can take the ferry from Liverpool or Haitian, for example. Um, but it is it's, still, it's like a four to six hour ferry. Wow! Right. It is it is almost exactly halfway between say Liverpool and Dublin. The, okay. the, the closest bit of land is only just by like a mile. That weird bit of Scotland that dribbles down. Mm. Oh. That that's that bit of. That that particular firth or whatever it is. A weird bit of Scotland. Yeah, that dribbles it, it dribbles down, and now it's it's, it's sort of on a level with um, Carlisle. Mm. Um, oh yes. So yes. That, that whatever that I can't remember what it's called, but that that they've measured it. That's technically the nearest bit of land. But I mean, you can get a ferry from Anglesey uh, and Dublin as well. So it's right bang in the middle. It's very far. People think it's like the Isle of Wight, like it's a twenty minute car ferry or whatever. No. I think I went on a hovercraft to the Isle of Wight when I was a kid. That sounds right. It was very exciting. Yeah, mm. the seas are too too rough for for hovercraft. <laughs> yeah, you know? and the Irish the Irish Sea is is a cruel in winter is a cruel. Do, do you want to come to the Isle of Man? Will there be hovercrafts? <laughs> no, it's That'd too sweet. Too rough for your hovercraft, boy. <laughs> There'll well, be I, no hovering in any craft. <laughs> sounds like <laughs> I just watched Jaws for the first time, and that's a bang on quint. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, the, the scene black that, like a doll's eyes. The, the, <laughs> that is a bang on impression. It, it's extraordinary. I've never seen the film until this week and for that shark yeah <laughs> what a character um but um he was big yeah. but but the scene when they introduced quint it's it, it it must have been so spooved as a scene yes that i can't watch it as a straight scene because yeah. the long tracking on him telling a, a crazy <laughs> rambling story and he pours into eat a whole cracker uh, in the middle of it um it's very fun to talk about uh, things that you find um, disturbing or predatory, as if they are the shark in Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, what's a sort of famously shallow, like, you ever seen the eyes of a reality star, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Black like a doll's eyes. <laughs> like, really imply that they're sort of soulless predators. <laughs> Just use that speech and substitute shark for <laughs> for Instagram influencer or whatever it might be. It was, yes. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that was a masterfully constructed story, and uh, what I have notes on here is <laughs> is is it's a very unusual, st- even by the standards of the weird folk stories yeah. uh, and and mystical legends we've talked about. About. This one is odd. Jeff. G E F. That's right. G E F. Jeff the Talking Mongoose. Yes. Is the name of this story. Jeff the Talking Mongoose is but one of Jeff the Talking Mongoose's names. Whoa. Oh, yes. Other yeah. names include the Dolby Spook. Yeah. <laughs> the Man Weasel. The Fifth Dimension. The Eighth Wonder of the World. Yep. And. An extra, extra clever mongoose. Yeah. <laughs> all of also all of those names were names that he gave himself. Yes. Of course he did. Yeah. So Using his it. talking skills. Yeah. 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 Well, um, what Dolby? Uh, Dolby is a part. Well, you you were telling me about that area of the. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. The it's not like he wasn't also an audio technician yeah. <laughs> who Dol- invented surround sound yeah. so that he could really Dolby Dolby with an A. I can't emphasise enough how accurate it would be to call it a Hamlet. I mean, a Hamlet by Isle of Man standards. Like, In that someone's killed your dad. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you yeah, pretend exactly, to yeah, be mad. As a ghost. <laughs> um, it's 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 like uh, three houses and a farm kind of thing. If what? that, oh, it's, yes. it's 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 barely blinking you'll miss it kind of place. It's very very small, and it's on the west coast of the island, which is I would argue the spookier bit. <laughs> <laughs> the west coast of the island near near, near Can Peel. Can you put a number on it? How much, how much spookier oh, percentage? It's, it's at least fifty percent spookier. Okay, fifty to eighty percent spookier. Then. <laughs> There's the, the, with the, a fair wind, the, yes, yeah, with a fair wind behind it, the spookiness will reach uh, 
The least spooky bit of the Isle of Man is probably the airport lounge. <laughs> <laughs> That's the the airport lounge of the Isle of Man has a very Twin Peaks vibe in my head. In fact, I did a routine ages ago about the uh, bud. It has a budgie the little helicopter ride. <gasps> um, oh. that sort of continuously pleads for custom <laughs> <laughs> and so if you sit in the Isle of Man airport long enough you will be sort of intermittently harassed by the spirit of Budgie the little helicopter trapped in this ride <laughs> and I, the routine centred around how odd it was he was begging for customers f- from a sort of a demographic that can't possibly have any clue who he is no, or why totally he has a unknown. face or <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that's a like a twenty five year old show, is it? Early nineties, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So what but God, there he is every well, time. Anybody any kids listening? <laughs> um <laughs> Budgie's a little helicopter. Da, 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 da. Look it up. Well um, anyway, anyway, yes. So Dol- Dolby's like a, a little hamlet on the western coast on the way to Peel from and, the south. And one of those farmhouses that you were talking about yes. is uh is Cashin's Gap. Mm. Or Dawlish Cashin in Manx, I think. And um, the, a family lived there, f- four people, Jim um, and Margaret Irving and their two daughters, one of whom is called... I'm turning to you for the oh, pronunciation. Oh, Vori. 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 Because it's spelled sort of Voire, I was going to pronounce it. Yeah. Vori. And they begin to hear rustlings in the wall. So this is a stone farmhouse, quite an old building. It's 1932. But for insulation in the, from the harsh and merciless winds, are there harsh yeah. and merciless winds? Yeah, pretty harsh there? and merciless. Pretty harsh and merciless. Um, there's a, the, the, it's got an inner wall that's built with a little insulating gap. Right. Um, and they, they start to hear the sounds of scurrying and screeching within that gap. And as days and weeks and months go on, they become more complicated and they start to hear sounds and words and then pop songs. And finally, <laughs> there is one pop song, I can't remember which one. <laughs> um, finally, the, the, the spirit or creature in the walls learns to speak and begins to address the family and, they, and communicate with them using human speech. And it's a mongoose. It says it's a mongoose. It says it's a mongoose. He also says that he's not a spirit, but sometimes he says that he is a spirit. And sometimes he says he's the eighth dimension. So he says a lot of strange things. Yeah. Um, the, there are a couple of photographs of him. In one of them, he looks like a sort of toilet brush. Uh, and in the other one, he looks like just like half of a draft excluder wrapped around a fence. So did he pop out from the walls then? Uh, they, yes, they, they all saw him. Ah, okay. um, the, the, so sometimes you, the, they would see him at night, ev- and even visitors to the house would mm. sometimes see two little beady eyes peering at them from the end of the bed. But he's mainly known for not being seen and and talking. Um, so, yeah. for instance, Jim Irving was reading the newspaper one day, and uh, the screeching voice, ex- the exact voice you would imagine a mongoose to have, mm-hmm. uh, said, "Read it out, you fat-headed gnome." Oh, yeah, so extremely, extremely rude. A lot yeah. of it was quite aggressive. Uh, some very insulting things were said. And basically, word got out about the magic mongoose. As it would. Well, naturally, yeah. you can't keep something like that quiet. <laughs> no. Tabloids got interested and people came to investigate. And it's it's very weird. It's a really weird story. Yes, because... it's a talking mongoose <laughs> that lives in the walls. But it's very, Called like, Jeff. Un- unusually for anything to do with the Isle of Man, especially in the 30s. It was in, like, all the... The English papers. Yeah, like the, the people come over and like Harry Price, the famous um, oh, yeah. investigator of the paranormal, comes over and investigates it, and uh, as does another paranormal investigator. And it's not that everybody believes it. It's that it's very difficult to tell what kind of thing is going on. It's yeah. hard to tell if they're mad or if it's a... Because if it's a hoax, it's a weird hoax. Mm. So a yeah. lot of people think that it's, it's Vori throwing her voice. Um, right, but, but on the other hand, in the 1930s, everybody thought you could actually throw your voice and make it sound like your voice was actually coming from a different place, which, uh, as we in show business know, <laughs> isn't a thing. It's just a, it's a microphone, and you're just pretending the voice is coming from somewhere else. You can't actually make it sound like it's coming from behind someone. Yeah. Um, and there are several accounts of, uh, of uh, bystander witnesses hearing the voice when she was outside or far away or in a completely different location. Yeah, um, and there's and there's no real like it's not like it was the the Dolby theme park. Well, so, so that, ooh, loads of money in it. No, they... they it's a they point, didn't, pointless they, hoax. They <laughs> didn't sell their story. No. Um, they kept trying not to be interviewed about it. Um, <laughs> they, they didn't want any attention. Some people think it's... Oh, they just wanted to... They wanted to get the farmhouse famous so they could sell it because they're very poor farmers. They didn't sell it until after Jim had died. And they sold it at a loss because nobody wanted the haunted yeah. house. 
so there's no gain to be had right. from them for inventing uh, uh, inventing a mongoose. And there was that I, I, I didn't realize there was sort of huge legal case. I didn't know there was there a, was a case. libel case because someone involved was in some sort of position at the BFI and oh yes he uh, he was accused in the paper of being some sort of lunatic for believing in this mongoose or and he sued for libel which is weird defamation of character because that that libel I think he won uh, he, which means that in law it's been established that he isn't crazy and therefore the mongoose must well, exist, he, surely. He won because, the, the so the case, you only really have a case. If someone accuses you of something um, that, and this is useful for all podcasters to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you accuse someone of something in the UK and it is a, an imprisonable crime, it, they don't, you, you don't, uh, that person doesn't have to prove it's affected their life at all. The fact it's a crime means you you f***ed up. Mm. However, if it's not a crime, if it's just something weird, like believing in a mongoose, it's up to the angry person to prove that it's ruining their life and losing them business. And ironically, the counsel of the BFI, I think, wrote a memo to the guy saying, stop suing them for saying you're mad. You're making us embarrassed, <laughs> and 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 we won't want we won't want you involved anymore, and therefore won the case for him by writing him that. By memo. By, by saying tone down the mongoose business for well, for drop God's the sake. case, drop, drop the case, case. or, or you're so in trouble. He, he won the case because they warned him to drop the case. Wow! And that apparently it's referred to as the mongoose case in in legal precedent. <laughs> but but unfortunately, it doesn't establish as I was hoping that the mongoose was definitely real. No, that would be a good film though. <laughs> oh, what the final? We call the final witness. Scurry, yes. scurry, 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 scurry. <laughs> He's in the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't it's see a long him. story. <laughs> Put the gavel down, you fat headed. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of some like like all those horror movies where they or like a uh, um, woman in black or Dracula where mm. a, a sort of an educated man from London is sent to the Isle of Man oh, to yeah. determine the <laughs> I I love those stories. They're always it's always someone who wears a sort of waistcoat and is very fastidious being yeah. being harassed by the paranormal. Yeah, who should we get on the case here? I know an uptight virgin <laughs> yeah. should, we, yeah. should we send him? Yeah. I know. Oh, a, yeah, he's I, not got a lot on. I, I know a guy. He's a little unstable. Yeah, he'll be fine. I know a guy who who combs his hair down really brutally. <laughs> really a like, buttoned up kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. It's all starchy suits. Sounds perfect. <laughs> hates, send him. Hates travel. Loves documents. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, so it was taken seriously. Two investigators investigated it, uh, and they the family produced some evidence. Mm-hmm. And I encourage you to not Google the pictures of the evidence. Oh. Um, I've, I've described two of them to you. They're not hugely impressive. There are imprints <laughs> of his teeth and paws, which look a little bit uh, sort of school craft day, I have to say. Uh, and there is some of some of his hair. Now, Whoa. I have done some first hand research here. I went to uh, Harry Price's Library of Magical Literature in Senate House, and uh, I have seen, with these sweet eyes, Jeff the Talking Mongoose's hair. Oh. There is a little bundle, and it's labelled the hair, hair of Jeff the Talking Mongoose. Now, I, I'm not a zoologist. Right. Uh, I've, n- I've no particular skill when it comes to forensic... Or, or a cryptozoologist. Or a cryptozoologist. <laughs> Are you a hair person? Hair I, person? I, I don't know anything about hair. Uh, I've never seen a mongoose, but I can tell you one thing for goddamn certain gems. That was mongoose hair. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I've, I saw it. But they did send it to an, uh, uh, an expert who said that it was dog hair. But <laughs> he's dead now. So. How many dimensions did this dog hair have? Uh, it's just, uh, it's a li- it, if you can imagine, it, it's sort of yellowish. You know the camel bristles from a paintbrush? Oh, yeah. It's that, it's that sort of buff tan colour. Yeah. Um, quite similar to the colour of the, the sheepdog belonging to the Irving family's hair, I understand. Yeah. Uh, um, but I've seen it, James. And You've now seen it. he's real to me. Jeff, <laughs> yeah, Jeff is proving himself from presumably beyond the beyond the grave. Is he because he's no longer active, Jeff? Well, he, yes. Am I spoiler in? No, Jeff. Jeff is no longer active. Well, he, I want to back it up because several people saw him. Workmen wouldn't go into the house because it had uh. a terrible reputation. And uh, someone called Captain Dennis, who seems to be a quite straightforward sort of military chap, mm-hmm. um, he he was one of the people who witnessed him doing stuff while nobody seemed to be able to be in the position to make that noise. Right. right. So while uh, while Jim was in the wrong place, while while uh, Vori was far away. Mm-hmm. He had experiences and heard the voice, which I think is pretty impressive and unusual. Yeah, it opens the door to uh, what? Where? What would the theory be here? To, to if you were sort of 
minded for, for this sort of thing, but not minded for a talking mongoose. You'd say a, a, it's like a, a tricksy demon. Or a poltergeist, I think. Yes. It's, it's often mm. referred to as the Dolby spirit. Yes. Um, so so that the of the people who think that these sorts of things do happen, <laughs> yes. poltergeist is quite popular, except they don't usually talk. And no. that poltergeists are usually um, aggressive and violent, whereas while the mongoose was rude... <laughs> he was also quite helpful. He was more like a sort of household spirit who, like you say, is yes. mischievous, but also sometimes helpful. You know, he would he would do a bit yeah. of tidying up. He would get he would get things for them. A sort of hearth spirit of some kind. Yeah, and he and he would he would do little bits of spying on them. He'd go, he'd go, he'd scurry around to other people's houses and come back with information. So Jim Irving was able to tell people things about their houses that he'd never been inside right. because uh, because the little uh, mongoose had had scurried out there and then come back and told him. Right. Ah. However, after Jim Irving died, it, it toned down, uh, oh. and uh, the person who bought Cashin's Gap didn't experience any mongoose-related activity. Mm-hmm. Well, that, what a brilliant one of the Paranormal Activity series that would be. Yes. <laughs> mongoose-related activity. Yeah, Paranormal Activity colon mongoose. Yeah. <laughs> They'll reach it eventually yeah. in the franchise. It's, I think it's a really weird one. I've written uh, Folie à Trois here. Or, actually, there was a second daughter, so it might be Quatre. But you oh. know Folie à Deux, the, mm. the, the phenomenon... Uh, I'll explain it badly in case anyone listening doesn't know. It's when somebody who is delusional in some way is able to bring a second person into their madness yeah. uh, with in a sort of ca- charismatic cult likely to way. So it's not a deliberate fooling of someone, but it's drawing someone else in so that both people share the same delusion. Uh, and once they're separated, the person who the, the the lower status, weaker personality tends to go back to being able to see the world the way it really is. And that's perhaps a plausible explanation because yeah. they, they didn't... Uh, one of the interesting things is that um, Vori was interviewed uh, for, for a newspaper many years later as an adult. And unlike like the Cottingley fairies and <laughs> unlike the Fox sisters, uh, other famous sort of uh, child mysteries, she said, no, it was real. Like, mm. and leave me alive. It ruined my life. Everyone's always going on about this mongoose. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was real. End she, of story. She reacted exactly as a woman who had been harassed by a um, talking mongoose <laughs> <laughs> would have reacted. Yes, and it's 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 really hard to see. It's it's true, James. It's what, basically that's the end of the story. Is there was a magic talking mongoose who lived for a while. There was a chatty mongoose called Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I've got some direct quotes from the mongoose uh, himself. Are we going to have to bleep them? <laughs> <laughs> So here are some quotes. I am not a spirit. I am a little extra, extra clever mongoose. I am a ghost in the form of a weasel, and I shall haunt you with weird noises and clanking chains. Weasel chains. <laughs> well, it doesn't say that, presumably. Well, it, it, just, I don't. Maybe this is for the for the scoring round. But are mongoose is mongoose the plural or mongoose? I think it's mongooses. Are mongooses native to the Isle of Man? Uh, 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 the next quote, James. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, James. Sorry. The next quote would have answered that question. Oh. I, I was born near Delhi, India on June 7th, 1852. I have been shot by the Indians. I'm a marsh mongoose. And while mong- mongoys, mongoas, are not native to the Isle of Man, there are some there that were, that were imported um, for sort of uh, rodent control. And, yeah. So it, it is possible yeah. that there could have been a mongoose on the Isle of Man. In and the they 30s. would have come by ship, so they would have picked up a bit of Docker's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It explains. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a little bit rough around the edges, yeah. exactly. There are polecats uh, on that. There's a lot of weird animals on the Isle of Man that... Well, the cats don't have tails to begin with. The cats don't have tails. There are pine martens. Yeah. Um, there is a wild um, wallaby population. What? You just said there's a wild wallaby. There is one wallaby. No, there's more. There's a bunch. There's multiple wallabies. They escaped the wildlife park and they're doing fine. That's the weirdest bit. It's an enclosed space. How can you not yeah, catch can... a wallaby on an island? Well, they're just. It's a lot of forest. Oh, it's yeah. very. It's it's a big place relative to the pe- number of people. It's a pretty big place. Very small relative to the massive number of wallabies. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> running rampant. About, uh, this they, they they no one everyone thought it was an urban myth and then they caught them on a nature cam. Getting their own little GoPro, just yeah, yeah, smashing yeah. Up the shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wallabies. The red panda escaped recently. <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to tempt that back in with fruit. <laughs> what? I mean, in in this context, would we be wise to not believe in a talking mongoose? No. Bearing in mind that there's an escaped panda on the loose now in 2019. Red red panda. If it was a normal one, that would be harder to hide, wouldn't it? A a big one. (laughs) I'm a freak. I have hands and I have feet. And if you saw me, you'd faint. You'd be petrified, mummified, turned to stone or a pillar of salt. He sounds like a sort of preacher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He sounds like a rapper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, sp- I'll split the aptum. I am the fifth dimension. I am the eighth wonder of the world. It's very Muhammad Ali, a lot of this. Yeah. 
Uh, I am not evil. I could be if I wanted. You don't know what damage or harm I could do if I were roused. I could kill you all. But I won't. He is spitting bars. Yeah. I like him. It's it, yeah, it's, it's very sort of um, grime rap battle. Uh, based on my knowledge of grime rap battles. Yes. Yeah. Here on this folk podcast. Limited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're not... No one will pick <clears> up on that, don't worry. It's very much the... Um, I'm trying to decide which grime artist to reference of the two I know. I guess the, going to, the death threats my, make my H. H. I don't know if that's grime, from, actually. I from think Steps. That's, no, no. Oh, the new rapper a second from Birch. Manchester. Well, he's embarrassed himself there, hasn't he? But it's spelled without taken. the H, which is so it's properly spelled how... A-I-T-C-H. T-C-H. Oh, there is an H in it, yeah. I thought well, you meant, that, thought you meant it's spelled as in just like an empty square. <laughs> without the H. <laughs> uh, huh? Yeah. This one just sounds like your grand. If you knew what I know, you'd know a hell of a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you are kind to me, I'll bring you good luck. If you're not kind, I shall kill all your poultry. I can get them wherever you put them. <laughs> oh, Which yeah. has that sort of household spirit, sort of uh, boggart kind of a quality. Yeah. Mm. I've been to nicer homes than this. Carpets, piano, satin covers on polished tables. I'm going back there. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that's, that's hard. Harsh, though, and that's getting them. This yeah, one sounds like it, probably a catchphrase. Well, Jim, what about some grubbo? That's quite a good, sort of sitcom y. Yeah, what about some grubbo? And the audience clap, like when uh, Robin Williams appears in Morgan Yeah, Andy. People go, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts, put a sock in it. Chew coke. Also, more catchphrases. Yeah. I have three attractions. I follow Vori, Mam gives me food, and Jim answers my questions. I have three spirits, and their names are Foe, Faith, and Truth. Put the gramophone on. Those are all the quotes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> in what I would describe as no particular order. I'll link to where I found all of those, in case they were just made up by someone on the internet. Yes. <laughs> but they, they, they... Oh, like they were actually from a different talking manga. <laughs> yeah. Like the way a lot of those ones... Like, awful to have misattributed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that wasn't Winston Churchill that said that. Oh, I'm going to make an inspirational meme. Put the gramophone on and a picture of a mongoose. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, it's a it's a, su- it's a superstitious place, the Isle of Man. So the story would have carried no small amount of weight at the time. You think people would have believed it? This is the 30s. It's the 20th century. They uh, would have almost. They, the they would have taken it into account. I mean, we we had a thing, my family, where um we couldn't. We had a bit of a tr- a bit of trouble trying to find someone who was willing to cut down a silver birch mm. because of superstition. Yes. Um, uh, and a friend of ours tried to get some trees cleared from a, a field. To, so it could be used for agriculture, and the guys wallabies. came and, and, and cleared of wallabies. <laughs> yeah. The guys, the guys came and chopped down all the trees, but they left the silver birch. And the the workman actually said, "You you have to find someone else. We're not going to do it." Really? Yeah. So what's the what is the taboo around the silver birch? It's a, it's a witch tree. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a witch tree, and a, the, the the witch's sort of spirit supposed to be under yes. it or something. And uh, you've got the fairy bridge. Yeah, I've heard of that. Oh, that, that came up in my research. Yeah. And you, I believe you have, uh, related to potentially this mongoose, if he is like one of the helpful ones, you've got the, now this is a tough word to read, phenodery. Oh, the phenodery, pheno- yeah. Phenodery, who are like helpful they're, things. They're, yeah. They're, and glashans. Phenoderies are like, uh, they're, they're weird, they're unusual because they're massive, supposedly. But they're very sort of shy and easily upset and sensitive. They watch farmers working in the fields and they sort of lurk on the hillsides naked. Oh, that's yeah. the farmers. That's, uh, I really like these guys. They sound like, what's the ginger one from Labyrinth? You know, yes. The sort of, oh, yes. Oh, yes, I, yes. I like him. He's about the size of 75% of a piano belly, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I would say. There's, I remember reading a phenodery story somewhere ages ago, which was, um, a farmer, a farmer couldn't finish all his plowing and had to go do something else or go to bed or whatever. And then when he woke up in the morning slash came back, he saw a phenodery finishing up his plowing because they're just like helping. And the phenodery had obviously seen him not do the whole field. And so the phenodery is doing all the plowing and the farmer thinks, oh, the phenodery is doing it. You know, great. What a day. And thinks, ah, oh, and the phenodery is all in rags. Uh, and he thinks, I know what I'll do. I'll go and get some old, some of my old clothes. Uh... And I'll give them to the phenodery as a thank you. And uh, he does. And the phenodery is so upset at the idea that his rags are not already lovely clothes that he cries himself to death. Which <laughs> oh. <laughs> has got no moral to it. It's I a variation, discern. though, on the... On, a, a lot of the stories end with the giving of an item of clothing. Yes. Um, like yeah. in the Northeast, um, there's a helpful spirit with a shock and bad hat. I, I don't know if we've mm. actually mentioned that guy in, in this podcast. No. And the family go, oh, it's a shock and bad hat. And so they give him a new hat, and then he's gone. And of course, Doesn't he say something like, no, I've got a good hat? 
screw you all, I'm not doing any more good deeds. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Some some versions, uh, some people think that this phenodry phenomenon is sort of related to like a sort of a memory of the prehistoric peoples that like the Neanderthals that would have been there when the Celts first went over to the island. Oh, That's one right. interpretation. Another okay. interpretation is that they're the human form of a seahorse. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Or a real water horse. Probably that one. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, one of the two. My money's on seahorse. Yeah. yeah. Um, ferry, ferry bridge is still a thing. It's a particular bridge. Well, the bridge you drive over is supposedly not the actual ferry bridge. That's in a glen nearby. But the bridge you drive over, which is now the ferry bridge, you have to say hello to the ferries going over it or they'll they'll mess you up. Right. You have to greet them and show them proper respect because that's their bit of the territory. Mm. And you know, hear it on, on buses. Yeah, e- everyone on the, the bus will on say. Bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do they say? Hello, fairies. <laughs> if they, if they, if I they, don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> if they're really traditional, you could say, uh, good morning, little people. You're not supposed to call them fairies, really. They're little people. Hmm. Uh, it's PC gone mad. Yeah. Mara, <laughs> ma, uh, mara mai muinjavega is good morning, little people. And faster mai muinjavega is good afternoon. I can't remember what good evening is. Well, if, if you, you want to be really... make sure not to travel yeah, at night. Yeah, not at then, night. Well, I don't want to go there at Stay night. Stay off the bridge at night. But they always talk about cars breaking down and, I don't know, a woman laid an egg or something. Like, just mad. <laughs> mad things happen if you don't greet the... <laughs> Four wallabies looking on. Yeah. Every... <laughs> as, as the midwife, yeah. wallaby midwife pops the egg in, keeps, yeah. it, keeps it going. Every visiting comedian to the Isle of Man will, like, hear their own cab driver do it and <laughs> sort of try and construct something around it unaware that it's you know so, yeah, so pretty well it's, it's, it's so well known that you can't even do a joke about it because no because it's, it's what everyone who comes over tries to do jokes mm. about yeah yeah People, everyone will say it and you can't say rat when you're on the island that's bad luck to say rat yes it attracts them um right. you have to say what? long tail or apparently i read this that it used to be either long tail or iron fella Ooh. Which oh, is good. That's and lovely. If someone says rat, you have to whistle or touch wood. Okay. Right. Like Imagine what says, and, and bad luck you, generally. You like, really shouldn't have said wallaby all those times. Yeah. Yeah. That was the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, this is PC got mad. You can't say anything. Like that. <laughs> well, that's a, I'm a bit worried about how many times we've said mongoose now. I know we're not yeah. on the island, yeah. but still. Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time for the scores. James, I'm going to put this to you yep. uh, because you, you've got no skin in the game. No. Nope. You've got no hair on the mongoose. No, nope, I've got no aisle in this, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first category, names. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff. What he, better he, a name than Jeff? He had several other names. The Fifth <laughs> Dimension. <laughs> he's definitely I, he's definitely a rapper in the Cool Keith style. I like him. Jeff, Jeff the Talking Mongoose is a good yeah. mid-80s rap yeah. name. No, yeah, yeah, Notorious yeah. G-E-F. Yeah, <laughs> and the Talking Mongoose is. <laughs> Um, Jeff the Talking Mongoose, yeah. a.k.a. The Dolby Spook, Man Weasel. Man Weasel. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Because he's got hands and feet, he's unlike got, and His front hands mongooses. were massive. And it, it, that's, that's one of the reasons why the, uh, the the zoological experts were not keen on believing him that the handprints for his, for his front paws were like the size of a dog, whereas the back ones were like the size of a mongoose. Okay. Uh, which is which explains why he said that I know I'm a freak. You know, if you saw me, you'd be horrified. I've got hands and feet, and I'm a freak. And he was able to throw things um, around because ah. of his massive hands. Yeah, child-sized hands. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. Arguably, Perhaps, potentially. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe the size of a, a Manx child. Mm. I, I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm not an expert. And he's the very, very intelligent. A, an extra, extra clever mongoose. Extra, extra clever mongoose. Yeah. Well, that part can't be denied. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, that, that part's fair enough. The dimensional stuff is hard. <laughs> mm. uh, but we've also got loads of cool names like the uh, the Harry Price Library of Magical Literature mm-hmm. and, uh, and and Dorlish Cashin. Dorlish Cashin sounds like someone trying to talk about a specific cartel and a drunk. Dorlish Cashin. Dorlish Cashin. <laughs> I think it sounds like a, marv- a lot of these place names... It's like mm. very lazy fantasy fiction. Uh, we, we, I met you at the Siege of Dawlish Cashin. That's exactly <laughs> the, the kind of name you can chuck in a Game of Thrones bit of dialogue, and it all sounds great. Speaking of lazy naming, I did look up a little bit about the Isle of Man, and the giant that is the protector of the Isle of Man is called Manaman. Ma- Mananan. <laughs> oh, Mananan. And, <laughs> and he's the son of the sea. Oh, oh right. Okay. I thought it was Man-o-man. Thought it was Mano Man. Mano Man. Mano ah. Man. That's why when I Googled him, I just kept getting that uh, Muppet song. <laughs> he was like, did you mean <laughs> yeah. No, I meant Man-a-Man. Man. And That's then a... that is just, um, again, grime slang Ma- Manan- for a man. Yeah, Mananan Maklir. 
son, oh. of, son of Lear, the god of the sea. And he either gave his name to the island or took his name from the island. Hard to say. Mm. Yeah. So, um, w- w- out of five, James, what's your score for names? I, I love, I love it when someone gives their pet a very bog standard name. Yeah, like uh, Simon Johnson. Yes, the dog. cat. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord Aura. I did like it that my friend, her mum, was quite eccentric, and uh, the basically the shortened version of the dog name was Lord Oro, but it was like Lord Oro, the third Viscount of such and such, such and such. And oh, that's something. good. Yeah. yeah, it's Jeff. It was won it for me. It's five. It's, it's five. Even if it was, I thought you were going to detract points for Jeff. No, Jeff. That's a brilliant name for a supernatural entity. Great. Entity. Uh, that's five. I'm, I'm going to enter that into the ledger. Um, and I'm pleased that you said supernatural entity because the next category is supernatural. I'm glad uh, that you agree that it's supernatural. How supernatural be it? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I assume you're deciding between very and extremely. <laughs> well, now it's going to go to a, an area that I know you're not a fan of in mine. It, is it supernatural if it's uh, cryptozoological? <sighs> He's a spirit from the eighth mm. dimension. The uh, fifth uh, dimension. The fifth dimension. Uh, he's got. Eight, sorry, he's the eighth wonder of the world. He's the I eighth wonder of the world. I yeah, come I on. Should, sorry, and the problem is because we have Pierre here. This is clearly one of the least supernatural things to have happened on the Isle of Man. Because yeah, everything <laughs> like you can't cross a bridge <laughs> yeah. without having to tip a ferry. He's <laughs> done nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> on the on the scale of it, it's one it's of the more like extortion than tipping a thing <laughs> yeah. these ferries or little people. Sorry, maybe that's why everyone was so keen on it because they were so acclimatized to just sort of mad spooks. This was just a break. It was like watching a Mike Lee film for them. Well, they're just pleased that it could talk and explain itself. <laughs> well, at least we can ask. Just once. having to keep looking askance at every silver birch in case exactly. it's going to get you. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Muttering at stumps and, and, and things. Yeah, exactly. Mm, yeah, I suppose you're right that there is there's, there's clearly some real stuff going on like, you know, like pots and pans got thrown, people heard voices. That's Perhaps it's all just real. What's, and he said, he said, what was it, I, I can kill the chickens wherever they are? Yeah. I'll get your poultry, no matter where you put them. Yeah. There's that an element of manifesting rather than just being really mm. good at going places? I, I Also, the insults as well, I think that made it a little bit too real for them, calling him the fat-headed whatever. Yeah, I mean, gnome. Jim really bore the brunt of the And when the he was insults, started though. going into like their, their upholstery and stuff like that, that, mm. that, was, that was almost too much. Well, that's, you know, that's some of these rap beefs. Can get quite tasty. He would do very well. In the YouTube age, I think Jeff the Talking Mongoose would have done quite well. Yeah. You're right, actually. It's a real tragedy. It was a very poor 1930s farmhouse with very poor camera quality. He'd have been cancelled by now. He would, have... <laughs> <laughs> so he would have been milkshake duck long ago. Oh. <laughs> the internet loves Jeff the Talking Mongoose. <laughs> I, think... I Yeah, it's talking it down for super, Supernatural so? for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with just three. Just three? Just three, because I, I got... Belief for in the world's mongoose. only talking mongoose is three. The only talking mongoose that has been recorded in the Isle of Man. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, okay, fair enough. Three. I mean, you, you okay? It sang pop songs. Yeah, because he, he heard sang, them off sorry, the radio. He, he didn't write new ones. Yeah, but ghosts yeah. don't listen to the radio and then hum along to it. Oh, he said turn the gramophone on. That's yeah, one of those lines. Yeah. He, just, like, he liked banging tunes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a party mongoose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. The the final category, and this is a really important one, and we, we touched on it in the bit, is who benefits? Because, right, th- this won't make sense to Pierre, but this is not a Papa Bayliss case. This is not a case... No of someone who has made up a lie for an obvious reason and then it's got out of hand and they've had to double down on it and continue telling that lie mm. until it became folklore. Mm. There's no obvious motive for any of the lying. And there's also, there's no, like like you said, there's no theme park. There's no Scooby-Doo, we pull the mask off, uh, Jeff the Mongoose. And what's it for? And, they, and in all their behavior, they didn't embrace it. They found it a deeply irritating and life-ruining thing to bear <laughs> Every, yeah everything we know suggests that they fully believe and that everybody who experienced it fully believed that something was happening they didn't mm. try and sell a book <laughs> nothing nothing there, uh, there is a book out now um with a very very naively painted front cover oh, mm. if, you, if you google it it's mm. it's quite it's quite nice but it may... might be a local publication. I suspect so, yeah. The, the, because no one often writes about the Isle of Man, there is quite a brisk trade on the island for 
pu- publishing sort of things of I bl- like weird it. books. Yeah, I like the way like in Scotland, every bookshop has a, a Scottish book section. Exactly. Some Scottish books. Exactly. Like, yeah, in, the rest, yeah. in England, we just put the Scottish authors with the other authors. We're yeah. like, no, <laughs> do you want the real stuff? <laughs> it's behind the counter. Yeah, yeah, we have to put it behind glass in case people try and nick a oh, run are... out of there with a Stevenson novel or something. Yeah. Well, on the island, there's also just like reminiscences of Castletown <laughs> sort of books, and you, it's just it, that's what it is. You can oh, just flick through ones. it and go, oh. It's for people who were children in those photographs to buy. Literally. Say, well, that's me. <laughs> yes. Thousand print run. Yeah. That building, that's not there anymore. That's where I first, uh, that's where I first had a lavender suite. <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> so they always say. What's that, that? That's the high street? No. It but also, cut to the high street looks the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, I really think this is a, 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 I think it's a genuine, a genuine mystery. Because I don't know what I think about this. I don't, I'm not saying it's not yeah. a talking monkey because I've, I've seen the hair, James. You have seen some hair. I've seen some hair. It's it's odd in a way that is itself odd, even for its category. Yes, by the standards of these kind of stories, we haven't met this kind of weird weirdness. Yeah, it's a very scattergun. It doesn't teach a lesson. Approach. There's no moral. There's no there's no moral. There's no money. There's no. <laughs> there's I, no... Thi- I, d- I think it's odd, Dad. I think it's odd a dad, dad being odd. As a as a dad myself, yeah, you, I can see. Speaking as a father, um, I can see. <laughs> don't don't pull that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you go odd, you go weird, mm. and like you just. He might have just started doing it to amuse those kids, and then they got on the phone to the somehow got on the but, phone to the tabloids. But then the voice is still happening when he's out fishing or whatever. Well, yeah. old, old Captain whatever is going. Captain Les Dennis, yeah. Captain Les Dennis is there going. <laughs> I've, I've heard it. Mm. Is there a mongoose? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so weird about it. Is it? I I agree with you. I think it, it definitely starts out very nicely as odd dad. Odd dad. Yeah. Like oh, there's a cheeky ferret in the wall, and, and he's I, talk, and he's yeah. and talking about all this weird sci-fi stuff. But then the rest of it, yeah, it's quite sci-fi. It, which yeah. for a farmhouse in the 30s is a bit odd. Yeah, yeah. The the, the what were the, the pop songs in the 30s? Are I we can, allowed to? I can try and find the. Are they offensive? <laughs> <laughs> but it's that thing of like you go okay so the guy does it something and it's like a funny joke and then mm. it evolves into this thing where it's happening when no one's around and he knows about the inside of people's houses and yeah. it just is so weird it's so pointless in its oddness but then that's yes, that's a pointless like dad the song if you're interested Carolina Moon was his favourite Carolina Moon we all love it yeah. he, he also sang the, the, on that sort of he did like the Manx National Anthem yep. uh, hymns and fragments of a Spanish folk song couldn't be bothered learning all of it mm. fair um, enough Manx National Anthem's quite nice well, how's it going? Um, oh land of our birth oh gem of God's earth oh island so strong and so fair br- 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 stands as firm as Barul which is a very big almost a mountain that's what mm. Barul is Mm. Uh, stands as firm as Barul, thy throne of home rule makes us free as thy sweet mountain air. <laughs> and in the style of a mongoose? <laughs> well, uh, an Indian mongoose. <laughs> um, Ooh. It's, it's, it's always quite awkward on the island because you're supposed to sing, I think, first God Save the Queen because the Queen is the Lord of Man mm. on the island. She's the head of state, as it were. It's, it's Sauron, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she bought it from Sauron. Uh, I see. Um, and they were both betrayed. Yes. I, can't even, I don't know my Tolkien. <laughs> um, so everyone has to go, 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 save her. And it's inevitably, like some people, Manx nationalists won't stand for it. They'll mm. stay seated. But inevitably, the Manx national anthem is absolutely belted out. So, right. A tremendous volume, immediately following a very so- hushed rendition of the... So it's like the Noddy Holder, it's Christmas one is the one everyone really likes. Mm. Yeah. So everyone's there for yeah. that one. Yeah. Forget about yeah, you've you've got got to away to in a manger Christmas. nonsense. War is over. Yes, exactly. And there we yeah. go. Here's the bangers. Wizard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. On a side note, uh, just something for you both to enjoy and the listeners. Uh, please do look up the version of... Um, uh, so here it is, Merry Christmas, that one by Slade. Someone's yeah. done a version on YouTube, which is every line is, are you hanging up your stockings on the wall? Oh, nice. Very All nice. of it. But it's perfect. So who benefits is the category? Who be- Jeff. The Je- mystery- Jeff always wins. <laughs> Jeff always wins. Uh, yeah. We, we don't know. Are you about to deviate from the format of the show and refuse to score it because it is such a mystery? I think so. It's a, it's a question mark. A question this mystery, mark. This wow, this is, I mean, this sport. doesn't mean much to you, yeah, but this has never happened This before. is a big constitutional in crisis. Easily about 16 or 17 episodes <laughs> yeah. over a period of nine years, I think, yeah. we've been making this podcast. 
Oh, it takes a lot of time to do the research. Yeah. Okay, so it's, who benefits? It, when we bring out the top Question jump mark. set, this will be, that'll be a winner. It'll be like the Joker card if mm. you've got Jeff the Talking Mongoose. I've scratched the question mark in with, with shaky hand <laughs> in octopus ink on a quill, and now I'm, I'm going to close the book. Yeah. Why'd you close the book for you? Read it out, you have been listening to Lawmen with me, Alistair Pickett King, and James Shakeshaft, as well as guest law person Pierre Navelli. Next week is Christmas time. I know. So we're going to talk about the various little things that happen around Christmas time in the world of law, mm-hmm. folklore, and. Thank you for clarifying. That's it. That's it. The only time. Thank you.